Welcome back. Let's talk about mineral mining in Arizona. Oftentimes what people think about when mining occurs, oftentimes what you're mining out is minerals. Not always, but that's what often what people think. Gold, mineral, silver, mineral, diamonds, mineral. That's what people think. But there's plenty of other, you know, non-fancy minerals as well as stuff that is not a mineral that we extract out of the earth. But yet we still it's still called mining. So these are the um, active mines uh, um, in Arizona. So there's a lot of them. Um, yeah, there's plenty of them. These are just some of the major mines around Arizona. So some of the major mines include cement mining. This coal mine, uh, I don't know if they closed down the coal mine. I think they might have. But there was a, a major coal mine. Uh, up in northeastern Arizona. So a lot of copper, but the, the orangish, yellowish diamonds and triangles, a lot of copper. Uh, some gold, not much, but some gold. Uh, lime, which is a, a mineral used oftentimes in fertilizer, and uranium right near the Grand Canyon. So those are some of the major mines, but a lot of copper mining, hence we are the copper state. Um... Again, just another look about mining, uh, kind of some of the more bigger mines and, and where they occur. Um, again, just about everywhere. Uh, well, well, not everywhere, but in a good amount of Arizona. Uh, mining is a major industry here in Arizona. So what do we mine here in Arizona? So this is a pie chart of active mines and projects by commodity family, by the stuff that we take out of the ground. Biggest chunk of the stuff that we mine out of out of the earth here in Arizona, 67.5% are aggregates and crushed stone. So like rocks. Most of what we mine in Arizona is rocks. Yay! That's that's the least sexy mining can get, but it's a necessity. 17.1% um, uh, building stone, so big blocks of of stone to make buildings. Um, you can see metals make up about 6% of what we mine. So again, when people have this idea of mining or taking gold and silver and copper and diamonds, eh, not, not so much. And gemstones in Arizona account for 0.2% of mining. Most of what we're mining out is aggregate and crushed stone used for your front yards, used for foundations of buildings to, to set down underneath buildings or building stones themselves, big blocks that make up buildings. That's, that's 67, 77, 84.6% <coughs> uh, of what we take out of the ground is just rocks. In fact, cement and lime, so lime, so this is rocks. Cinders, those are rocks. Gypsum, that's a mineral. Uh, yeah, so the vast majority of what we take out of the ground in Arizona are rocks and minerals in rock form, not metals, not gemstones. Some of the metals that we do uh, mine in Arizona, copper, gold, silver, zinc, iron, lead. Um, but yeah, again, most of it's going to be your, your stone. So of, uh, of the building stones, just to break those down, um, over half of it are just decorative stone. So little rocks that you place out kind of in front of your house. Uh, you don't have to cut them so much. Dimension stones are, you know, stones that are specific shapes to make buildings. So we don't really do that anymore with buildings. It's usually metal frames, throw up some plaster, done. Uh, flagstones, those are the kind of pavers that you kind of uh, walk on. So again, mo most of what we take out of the ground in Arizona is just rock. So these are uh, your dimension stones. So yeah, they're cut to a certain dimension. So they're you know they're, they're hard to hard to do. So we don't do that too often. So looking at this map, uh, there's EMCC down there in the bottom left corner. There are some mines uh, around us here. So especially uh, through the Agua Fria River, uh, I don't know the last time any water freely flowed through the river, but there are a lot of mining operations down there. So here's Indian School and Camelback, here's El Mirage, here's Dysart, here's 107th Avenue. So depending on, you know, where you live, here's Glendale, Northern Avenue. 
But here's a, just one example of one of the many cement mines, mining out uh, cement. So to make cement, you just mine out particular um, uh, uh, sediment and minerals, and mix it with water, and it creates cement and some other stuff. But you have to mine that material out of the ground. So there's uh, cement uh, mines, and this one is right off Indian School Road. Uh, road. I, know I travel to and from work along Indian School Road, so when you're going over the river if you just kind of look to the south you'll actually see one on there's actually a couple on either side of the river just another example of some mines up here off of glendale in this case not cement but just aggregate stone different types of rocks that they take out of the, the river channel so again that's most of what we mine in arizona not the coolest or sexiest thing but hey we need them we need rocks i guess um, but Arizona is known as the copper state. It should be known as the rock state, I guess, now that I think about it. But copper, uh, so as far as uh, metal is concerned, copper uh, does take up a, a big chunk of, um, of, uh, of uh, commodities. Of, um, of the, the big, biggest share of what we mine metal-wise. So we have copper, we have gold, uh, lead, zinc, and silver, and iron, but copper by far. And, and we are the state that leads the U.S. in copper mining as well. That's why we're the copper state, part of the five C's of Arizona. Do you remember the five C's of Arizona? Maybe back if you grew up here and you went to like elementary school here, they might have talked about the five C's of Arizona. Does that ring a bell? See, see what you can come up with. Maybe I'm, I might ask about that in class. Who knows? But copper is one of those five C's, what Arizona is, is known for. Um, even closer, uh, or another type of mine, I should say, not necessarily closer, but another type of mine close to Estrella Mountain, again, here is EMCC, if you just go straight north up Dysart until you hit Glendale, on the corner of Dysart and Glendale is the Morton Salt Mine. So here's Glendale, here's Dysart. So this is the Morton Salt Mine. So Morton Salt, like, they're fam they make salt, like, they ever bought, like, the, the big thing of salt with the little girl on the umbrella on it? That's Morton Salt. So they mine salt here. Now, the salt they mine here isn't table salt. Salt gets used for a lot of other things. So this is more industrial grade salt. But it's kind of fascinating how they do this. So there's the way they get the salt out from underground. So let me move me a little bit here. So underneath this portion, so just north of us here, uh, about 600 meters down, which is about 2,000 feet, so about a half mile below the surface, there's this big uh, kind of plume of salt. So there's a couple of ways they could have done it. They could have gone down and like drilled a shaft and sent workers down there, machines down there to crush it up and pu push it back up elevators and blah, 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 blah. But it's pretty far down there. That would have cost a lot of money. So what they did instead, kind of smart, is they drilled a, drilled a hole, drilled a, drilled a hole down to the salt bed, and then they pumped water down there. And so they pump water down there to dissolve the salt. And now you have this salty water, because the salt's dissolved in it, and then they suck it back up. So now you're sucking out the salty water. And then what they do is they just have these big ponds, they pump all this salty water, and they just leave it out, and the water evaporates away, and what's left behind is the salt. It's pretty ingenious. I thought that it was like, oh, that's, that's a sweet idea. Whoever thought of that, good job. So yeah, you just pump water, dissolve the salt, suck it out, let the water evaporate, and then you scoop out all the salt. So again, this is industrial salt, not table salt. But the issue is, if you start to dissolve all this hard mineral layer of salt, known as halite, if you start to dissolve all this stuff and you're creating this big empty gap, underneath a half mile of land, well, what's going to happen? That's a lot of ground on top of a big hole. So guess what's going to start to happen? The ground is actually kind of sinking in this area. At some point, it's going to fall in. Yay! Watch out if you got kids at Luke Elementary, I guess. <laughs> so uh, salt, the mineral name, Halite, that's the fancy geologic mineral name. So uh, Morton Salt uh, Mining, at least at this 
uh, facility in Glendale. It uses solution mining, it's pumping down water, dissolving the salt, and then kind of sucking it back out. Um, there are other salt mines in the world that uses machinery. The, the salt layers aren't that far below the surface, so they can actually, uh, you know, send machines in there to, to kind of extract it all out. They don't have to dissolve it or anything. This is just at this particular site. It produces 183 million pounds of salt every year. 183 million pounds of salt every year. That's how much stuff they're taking out from below ground. If you're taking out 183 million pounds of stuff from the below ground and you got all these thousand plus feet of material on top, at some point, it's going to fall in. Uh, this salt is industrial grade salt and it's, it's not as clean as table salt would be. This is not how you get table salt. But this salt is used to produce, for instance, chlorine for swimming pools. Uh, as well as water softeners. So if you have a water, some people have a water softener like in their house, usually in their garage or something next to the water heater. It's a little box that, that helps to take out some minerals that naturally occur in city water. So the, the water, when it comes out of your shower or your faucet or whatever, is, is soft, meaning it's, it's some of the mineral content, extra mineral content is taken out. If you don't have one of those, you're fine, but that's what causes, like, around your shower, that white crusty stuff that you get around your shower head, that's calcium buildup, that's dissolved minerals, that when it's coming, when the shower is running, that those minerals kind of build up. What a water softener does is kind of takes those out so you don't get that crusty stuff. So some people have that. Um, oh, let me move me back. But another big user of that salt is the uh, Palo Verde Nuclear Generating Plant, about 20, 30 miles west of us here at Estrella Mountain, past Buckeye out near Tonopah. They use water mixed with salt, harvested from this plant as a, as a coolant for the nuclear uh, energy, gener energy generating process. So they also use a lot of salt out there. If we were to take Arizona, and slice it in half and kind of look at it from the side, from south, southern Arizona up to northern Arizona. So if we were to slice it and look at it from the side, like, like a layer of cake, we actually see a rather large halite deposit uh, underneath uh, the ground in what's known as the Luke Basin. The Luke Basin, hence Luke Air Force Base. Basin Depression, since we're in the Basin and Range Province. So it's a rather large halite deposit how it got there, I mean, that's a story for, for, for a different class. But there's this large salt deposit, and again, you can see how big it is. It's, you know, a few thousand feet thick, you know, from top to bottom. So, but as you start to kind of take this away, that stuff on top might eventually fall in. Um, the deposit is eight miles long, five miles wide, over a mile thick. It's a lot of salt down there. It's a lot of salt down there. So yeah, Phoenix is in this area. You can see a lot of them. The you can see the basin and range province going back to you know the unit on plate tectonics and how Arizona formed the way it did. You see some blocks went up, some blocks went down, some blocks went up, some blocks went down. So from southern Arizona, kind of all the way through the transition zone, the Mogollon Rim up into uh, the Flagstaff area. But here you have that halite deposit. So you can see how the geology underneath us in central and southern Arizona is a lot different than the geology you see up in Flagstaff. This is very much volcanic activity. More on that in Unit 6. All right. But that's going to bring us to the end of our talk on minerals and rocks, mostly on minerals, a brief introduction to rocks. We'll take some time in class to do some activities, identify some different minerals, but that's really leading us to the next units. Uh, taking that knowledge of minerals and how we can identify rocks and what story those rocks tell us. Because rocks tell a good story. So this is just the, the first chapter of, of getting there. With that, you know, let's bring this to an end. It's been fun. Until next time, I'll see you then.